All right. Good morning. My name is Tara Cyberson, and for my senior project, I trained a horse how to jump. So some of the background information about how horses jump, um, they have multiple stages as they approach, go over and land, and they go over and jump. One of the beginning parts is as they approach in that first, like that palomino color horse, the first stage is with the rider, they start to hunch their back over and they put more weight on their hind legs, giving more impulsion as they approach their jump or more energy. Um, as they go over the jump, they have to learn how to distribute their weight to carry themselves and also the rider on top of them. Horses' collarbones aren't attached to their body through bones, so they actually are attached through their tissue and muscle. So when they hit the ground at last horse, their muscles have to contract to embrace the impact of them landing. So I first started riding horses when I was eight years old. Um, I started jumping when I was about 11 at one of these camps. Uh, I jumped there for, I went to that camp for about four years. That picture, actually, that day, that jump, that horse, everything about it is the day I had my worst accident. I fell off of that horse going over that jump, and I totally, really screwed up my back in so many ways. It was, I, I laid on the ground for 10 minutes, couldn't move, couldn't breathe, it was really bad. People asked me the following day, or actually the same day, if I was ever going to get back on horse and ride again. And, I was over there sitting, thinking just, wait, what, what happened to me? I'm fine, like, why would I not get back on? They're like, well, you could have died or broken your back. And I was like, well, I didn't. So, got right back on the next day, started riding again. Um, I kind of took a break after that camp, though, just because I kind of was aging out of the camp and I didn't have a place to ride anymore until I went here. This is Samson. He is 18.3 uh, black perch run. 2,000 pound draft horse. Um, that's equivalent, his back size is like 5'10", 5'11". I can't see where his back. He's the biggest horse I've ever seen in my life. Um, so again, my project was training him to jump, but there was also steps that were involved in the process of training him to jump. I also had to keep him exercised and get him motivated enough to be able to get through this process of getting him to jump. Um, so. Some of the research behind projects like these, it's a necessity to know further and more information behind these things. You can't really just start and imagine that you're going to do perfect and do absolutely well. So a lot of the research that was put in was done through videos, websites, books. I asked writers who I knew jumped. I asked previous instructors. I got as much insight as I could on the process of training. and not only training, but also riding, because I need to know how to ride and jump properly in order to train him. So one of the books that I read was Training the Event Horse by Virginia Lang. Um, this book was super incredible. It was a very decent sized book, so it took me a while to get through all of it, but from start to finish, all it was doing throughout the whole process was teaching and giving me tips, information on better riding techniques, showing me different forms, the layout of how to approach and set up jumps, measurements, everything. It was really useful. Um, this book definitely helped get me through the majority of, I would honestly say, my training prog progress. So the process at which it took to make this happen was meticulous. It was a very painful process. Working with an animal is working with someone who has a mind of their own, especially one who you can't really communicate with. So if something you're doing they don't like, the only way they show it is kind of like bad behavior because they can't tell you that what you're doing doesn't work or doesn't, they don't like. So the way we began was just by practicing. I set up two posts and I just put a pole on the ground. So the first stages were just getting him to go in between the poles so he learned and understood where I wanted him to go. Once we had done enough of that, I felt like he was comfortable enough knowing where I wanted him to go. So we started, I started by raising the poles up the cross jump just a little bit. A dilemma that we faced during this project was he took advantage of his size 100% of the time. Because he's so big, raising the jump at all, he could just walk, walk right over it. And he definitely did so many times. And the setback to that was I never knew when we were actually ready to progress and move forward because it didn't feel like he was learning anything because he would just stop and he'd just walk right over it because he didn't have to do anything. So my biggest point in progress was trying to pick his front legs up so he wasn't walking over these jumps because, oh, it was such an issue. 
And then another dilemma that we kind of faced was him, like anyone else I know, is very food driven. He, any, any time I take him on a, like a trail ride or whatever, just trying to build his stamina, he would stop and literally eat leaves off the tree. And I was like, okay, we're not giraffes here. Can we be civil? Or he'd stop dead in his tracks and drop and eat grass. And it was hard because then I'd have to reset what we were just doing and try to make him go through it again. So that way he didn't get the hang and get the idea that it was okay and appropriate to just keep stopping, even though we were in the process of trying to get through something. So between him knowing how big he was and how food driven he was, it took this project way longer than I wanted to. So the process that we made wasn't as far as I was hoping we would get. Um, really got the jump. Now in the uh, previous picture, we, I did get him to pick his feet up. There were, as the jump got higher, he was learning that he couldn't walk over it anymore. They were getting too high that stepping wouldn't really work and he knocked them all off. Um, so I think throughout this process, my essential question behind this project was how jumping impacts a horse's life. But I kind of feel like throughout the process of this project, my question kind of changed more to how riding affects a person's life. Because I kind of felt like there's, people do therapy, they do horse therapy, that's actually a thing. And I, I feel like as I was younger, I never kind of really noticed how useful and how therapeutic horseback riding actually could be. So working with him, working with someone alone, working through something that we both had to kind of overcome, both of us having to learn different things, learning how to work together, I kind of felt like the impact I had on him was way smaller than the impact he had on me. I just learned so many valuable life lessons in general from things that he was doing that was misbehaving or just kind of anything. We rode, no matter what the weather was, that picture with me in the coat, it was 26 degrees out, felt like 14. And the owner was laughing at me hysterically, saying he couldn't believe I was riding in this ridiculous weather. But I had to get those hours, you know, I had to get it somehow. <laughs> so, still kept going. Um, I learned so much with him, and I'm super glad that I had this opportunity to work with him. Um, I have videos. There's like two super short clips, but I don't really know if, how well they're going to work. And also, don't mind my sister yelling in the background. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these two are pretty close, like back to back to each other. So they're not, the progress we made wasn't that much different watching these two videos, but he still did pick his feet up and get him to go over. We didn't really exceed more than a trot because I wanted him just to focus on getting in between and focus on picking his feet up. If he was at a canter, we would have had to focus on measuring strides and measuring too many things that we just didn't have time to focus. Um, so I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to work with him. And uh, thanks for listening. Anyone have any questions? I do. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry, because I'm interested. Um, what was like the highest that you had him jump? Like, I think the highest we probably hit was about. We never had a straight bar cross. We always worked with cross rails okay. to make sure he'd get in between. But the highest point that the cross rails were at were probably two foot five inches, probably. And then in theory, mm -hmm. so in theory, years down the road, all kinds of training, what would be the highest that he could jump? Like physically? It really depends on kind of the horse. Some draft horses can go really far in the jumping business. For training with him, I don't really picture him going much mm -hmm. more than like a 3.6 maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't really picture him going too far. He's just so big and so heavy set. He didn't really have too much athleticism behind right, him. Right. So I don't, some of the draft horses that you watch competing or riding and jumping, like, it really just depends on kind of how athletic they are and kind of how much you've trained them in the past. And he's 19 already, okay. so all the years prior, or 17, sorry, but all the years prior, had we been working with him sooner on sure. this, yeah. I'm sure we probably could have gotten him a little bit higher and more efficiently, but 
for him, I don't picture anything more than like a three six. And then lastly, um, you know that cold day you were talking about, does yeah. he mind the cold? He prefers the cold. Okay. Because okay. working so working in the hotter weather, he would sweat like crazy. Yeah. So by the end he was he would get exhausted so fast and he had no interest. But as it was colder we had more time to kind of warm him up and he would last longer because he wasn't sweating and yeah. biting himself out as much. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks, John.